This conference will now be recorded. Welcome to the May 9th South Whitehall Township Planning Commission meeting. Everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the Republic for the nation under God, indivisible. Mr. Adams, can you do the roll call? Yes. Trevor Dombach. Online. Yeah. Tim Dugan. Here. Todd Farringer. Here. Brian Height. Here. Diane Kelly. Also not online. Mark Luth. Here. David Wilson. Here. Five present, sufficient for a quorum. All right, I'd like to also note uh, township staff and consultants that are here. Greg Adams, township planner, Dave Manhart, director of community development, Andrew Hoffman, township solicitor with Zader Law, Anthony Tallarita, Township engineer with the Pidcock Company. I'd also like to say that Leo DeVito is online. All right, and can we do the meeting rules? Yes. For an orderly meeting wherein all attendees may be able to fully participate, we ask that you adhere to the following rules. In order that both in-person and remote attendees hear all comments or questions, all in-person attendees will be required to use microphones at all times. We request that the remote attendees please mute your telephone or microphone to avoid background noise that may cause interference with the meeting and make it difficult for others to hear. Staff may mute the microphones or remote attendees if needed. Public questions and comments will be taken at periodic intervals throughout the agenda. We will start with no time limits, but the Planning Commission Chairman may impose a time limitation if there are many questions or if the meeting is running short on time. For in-person attendees, Please raise your hand to be recognized, then move to the podium when directed. Turn the podium microphone on and state your name, address, and comment or question. Please turn the podium microphone off when done. For remote attendees, the chat box feature will be active throughout the meeting. If you have a comment or question, please type your full name and address in the chat box. When you are recognized and so directed, please unmute your microphone and state your name, question, and comment. Mute your microphone when done. For those who are accessing the meeting by phone only, staff will periodi periodically ask for caller comments and will unmute all callers. Callers must identify their name and address prior to making a comment. Your cooperation and adherence to these rules will ensure an orderly and respectful meeting. Thank you. All right, we're on agenda item number three, review and approval of minutes. Does anyone have any uh, Chairman, comments. I will ask to that these be tabled because there's only three members present tonight that were at the meeting. So I think it would be prudent to have it uh, approved by more members that were present. All right. I'll make a motion to uh, table. We have a second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. All right. Agenda item number four, subdivision review. Looks like the first project we have on uh, the agenda is St. Joseph the Worker walkway expansion. Is there anyone in the audience um, interested in this project other than the applicant? Okay. All right, Mr. Adams, would you like to do your presentation? Yes. This is a waiver from land development request. This is, I think, our first real one. Um, so I did include in your packet um, a little background in the explanation for what this um, process is and how it should uh, go. So other than that, we will kind of just review it as we do our normal land development uh, review. So. Without further ado, this is an application to further develop the property located at 1858 Applewood Drive, 
The plan proposes the construction of an approximately 1,400 square foot con concrete walkway on the south side of the main driveway, south of the school building on the 11.6628 acre parcel. The property is zoned low density residential R3. St. Joseph the Worker Parish is the owner and applicant. The Community Development Department is recommending that the Planning Commission recommend a waiver from land development approval from the Board of Commissioners subject to the applicant complying with the following conditions. One, that the applicant address to the satisfaction of Township Engineer, the comments of Mr. Anthony Tallarita is contained in his review dated April 16, 2024. The applicant shall provide to the Community Development Department written confirmation from the appropriate reviewing agency that all applicable comments have been addressed. Two, that the applicant address the satisfaction of the Community Development Department. The comments of Mr. Greg Adams is contained in his review dated May 2nd, 2024. Three, um, the applicant has um, satisfied that comment. That was the Public Safety Commission. They met on Monday evening and had no comments to the plan. So that is coming out. Four, that the application complies with forthcoming recommendation of the Parks and Rec Board. Five, that the applicant shall rec reconcile all open invoices for Township Engineering and Legal Services prior to the certificate of use being issued, and that the applicant shall remit for payment for any and all required fees to the satisfaction of Township Manager, the Community Development Department, the Finance Department, and the Public Works Department prior to the certificate of use being issued. Planning Commission's soft deadline to act on the plan is June 10th. 2024, the Board of Commissioners hard at deadline to act on the plan is July 10th, 2024. Thank you. Mr. Tallarita, do you have, um, would you like to do your engineering review? Sure, thank you. Um, we reviewed this plan. This plan is for a concrete area that they're adding to their existing parking lot. It does not change any of the uh, configuration Jason Hoffman, I'm the Public Consultant for the Planning Commission and Supervisor of the Board. Um, Rise, I'm just going to read a paragraph about the um, describing why this is happening. Uh, so, St. Joseph the Workers Club is seeking to replace a small grass area bordering the entrance circle of the Public Works Building. The sidewalk would normally make its way around the entire circle, which is the main drop pickup area for school buildings. The concrete sidewalk would raise the students in the standing area above the driving areas, and the existing sidewalk would thus increase safety and accessibility. 
in addition, parking spaces directly uh, have direct access to the sign. safety and security while having a lot of exiting for students, faculty, members, students. Thank you. Sure. Does um, anyone on the planning commission have any questions, comments? was a, a grass island in a parking lot and you're replacing it with concrete. Raised concrete. Yep. Is there anyone in the audience that has any uh, questions? Objections either, and if you choose to go through each form, that's just up to you and Greg. <clears throat> yeah, I, I have no objections for mass approval of that one. Yeah. Okay. All right, I, I, does anyone have any objections if we just go through each waiver all, all at once? All right, so does someone want to make a motion for waivers as listed in the few comments for A through L and the development waiver condition upon township condition? None opposed. Thank you very much. All right. We're on agenda item four B Cedar Creek Parkway West. 2024 improvements. Mr. Adams, would you like to do your presentation? This is also an application to purchase a tennis court on the south side of Extension, the Meadow area. Remove the existing softball field on the south side of Walter Walnut Street extension and replace it with two tennis courts, two pickleball courts, and a 19 space parking lot, all in the 132.4644 acre tract. The property is zoned medium density residential R4. County of Lehigh is the owner and applicant. As a bit of history, I want to point out that. December 3rd, 2014, meeting the Board of Commissioners by a resolution 201465 approved Major Plan 2014 101 Cedar Creek Parkway West, an applicant application to further develop the same property. 
Uh, the plan proposed to construct two soccer fields, three additional parking lots, and two 22 and 48 spaces, and stormwater management facilities in phase one. I believe there were some issues with phase two, and this was initially brought into staff as phase three. Staff recommended that this not be associated with a phase, um, as uh, the county is actually planning on doing a more comprehensive project next year to complete most of what was proposed in the 2014 plan, including uh, right-of-way improvements and the like. So this is simply a waiver from land development for the small projects um, I had previously stated. So the Community Development Department recommends that the Planning Commission recommend waiver from land development approval to the Board of Commissioners, subject to the applicant complying with the following conditions. One, the applicant addressed to the satisfaction of the Township Engineer. The comments of Mr. Anthony shall read it. It's contained in his review, dated May 1, 2024. The applicant shall provide the Community Development Department written recommendation, or, sorry, written confirmation from the appropriate reviewing agency that all applicable comments have been addressed. Item two, which was the comments of the Township Geotech Consultant, uh, have already been addressed. We did have a review letter, which I distributed at the top of the meeting, um, indicating that all geotechnical comments have been addressed. So that can come off. Item three, applicant addressed the satisfaction community development department. And had no comments to the applicant shall recommend township manager finance department and the public works department prior to the certificate of use being issued. The Planning Commission saw the deadline to act on the plan is June 10th. The Board of Commissioners' hard deadline to act on the plan is July 10th. Thank you. Mr. Tallarito, would you like to do your engineer review? Yes, thank you. So, again, this is a, the addition. Hi guys, I'm not sure if you can hear me. I think after you guys lost power, um, your audio is a little bit of touch and go. You can just let me know if you could hear me or not. We have you, Bernie. Okay, great. Whoever just spoke, I can hear you loud and clear. Other, everybody else is a little bit faint, so I hope that you guys got your power back down there. Um, I just wanted to, as a former South Whitehall Township- Before we get into the presentation, can, um, it looks like we have the, the previous project on the screen. We Move it to the current. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right, Great. Vern, it's all yours. Thank you. I, I won't take up too much of your guys' time. I just wanted to say uh, it's great to, to talk to you folks as a former South Whitehall Township resident, Lehigh County resident. Uh, to talk about a park that uh, both my family and I use often when we were there. We lived right up on Parkway Road. Um, but to, to save you and get to the brass tacks of what's going on, um, as Tony and, and Greg mentioned, um, what the county's looking to do in collaboration with the County Conservation District actually is to eliminate the existing tennis courts um, and replace that with a wetland meadow area. So virtually to create a riparian buffer along Cedar Creek as you can see on the uh, eastern side or the right-hand side of your screen there, um, and then uh, relocate that tennis court or tennis courts, there's three there, um, and to put two back, but also put two pickleball courts, given that's a new uh, sport that's becoming popular in the Lehigh Valley area um, and the corresponding uh, parking lot. 
Um, just a couple other notes beyond just collaborating with the P County Conservation District. Um, we have DCNR grant funding secured that does expire at the end of the year. Um, and uh, the County Conservation District actually has a grant as well through PADEP and that expires at the end of this year. So um, we're looking to be able to commence construction here uh, soon in the summertime and then wrap it up before that grant expiration in 2024. Um, to spare you any other of the details that's in the, in the packet that Greg had circulated, uh, I'd welcome any questions that you guys may have um, and looking forward to your feedback. Thank you. Does anyone on the Planning Commission have questions, comments, thoughts? Nope. All right. Is there anyone in the audience or online? All right. So I guess we have, um, it looks like seven waivers and then the waiver from land development. All right, and looks like packet page 61, or we can go to 49, 49, yeah, the 49, the six waivers. Then then it looks like on page fifty six and fifty seven we have seven waivers listed, so maybe one is looks like the landscape plan oh. Five on sixty one, page sixty one. Yeah, I mean, uh, normally that's deferred to a landscape and shade tree committee, but I think that there's, sh uh, with Greg shaking his head, it seems like that could be waived. Okay. All right. Okay, so there's seven waiver requests on page sixty one. We want to go through each one item by item, um, or is this similar to St. Joe's? Chairman, I, I believe it's very similar to the previous uh, application. Okay. I would make a motion to handle it that way. Okay. All right. Does anyone want to make a motion to grant, uh, recommend approval for the seven waivers listed on page 61? and the waiver from land development review conditioned upon community development department recommendation comments one, three, and five. So moved. I'll second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed, so moved. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. All right, we're on agenda item 4C, Parkland School District, New Operations Center, Phase 3. Okay, this is a preliminary final major subdivision plan. Um, this is an application to further develop the property located at 2619 Stadium driver road um, the plan proposes a 12,832 square foot addition to the second floor of the new operations center building on the 8.7 acre parcel the property is served by public water and is zoned rural residential rr2 parkland school district is the owner and applicant i do want to mention that at the february 28 2024 hearing the zoning hearing board granted a 100 space variance to the off-street parking requirement with four conditions and of course, as most of you know, um, April 19, 2023 meeting, the Board of Commissioners 
uh, approved Parkland School District New Operation Center Major Plan 2022-108. Uh, I believe the school district is here tonight to make a request. Uh, my name is Attorney Richard Campbell uh, from the Kings Pry Law Firm on behalf of the applicant Parkland School District. Uh, as Greg laid out, this is a, a plan for the phase three of Parkland School District Operations Center. Uh, ultimately, the district is requesting the Planning Commission recommend uh, approval of the plan and the waiver request submitted. Uh, however, in reviewing uh, Mr. Tallarita's review letter, the district is aware uh, that they did not submit an updated traffic analysis associated with the plan. That's reflected at Mr. Tallarita's review letter at uh, comment four. Uh, based on that, uh, the engineer's recommendation was that a, a traffic analysis should be provided to determine uh, if any improvements are necessary at the Lime Kiln, Kiln Road and Stadium Drive intersection. Uh, the, the district would certainly leave uh, any decision tonight to the discretion of the commission. Uh, however, the district uh, is under the impression that the best way forward at this point is to uh, table or continue this to the June meeting. Uh, the district did submit uh, a resubmission and fee today. Uh, so we believe that the requirements to get that on the, uh, the June agenda have been satisfied. And uh, in the event the commission has any questions for the district, we do have uh, the engineer and a district representative here with us tonight. Great. Thank you. Um, Tony, I, I think we missed your engineer review. No, that, that, that's perfectly fine. It was a, a good explanation. So um, the plan proposes 12,000 square foot of additional uh building space it has more traffic um at the time there was an analysis analysis that was missing for a left turn lane from line kiln onto stadium we note that the previous uh the previous submission a smaller building the warrants were very close to being met so with the additional uh Office building, we asked for more information. We have been in contact with the engineers um, throughout the week. It appears they're going to meet warrants for a turn lane, but the level of service drop is negligible, if any. It's still level of service A. All that being said is we've received information within the last day or two. Um, we don't have all the backup, nor had time to review everything for tonight. We believe that it's going to be accurate and that would be the recommendation, but um, the information just came in. So it's up to the planning commission to choose to either continue to table or move forward how you choose. Do you have time to do your review for the next meeting? Yes, yeah, definitely, for, definitely for the next meeting within the month. Is it able, are we able to act on some of the waivers they have listed in? Um... On page 76, May 2nd, letter A through G, understanding that traffic is a uh, concern moving forward, but we could knock some waivers out tonight as to not have to do them in June. Where's that? Yeah. We, we don't see the, um, we would foresee if all the data is accurate that was submitted to us this week, we would not see any changes to the plan that's presented. So we would have no objection to the waivers. And Mr. Commissioner, I do, I do believe that an amended waiver request was submitted today. Is that accurate, Scott? Uh, that, that added two additional waiver requests. So in the event that that's not before the commission, um, I, I could note those, all those sections, uh, or if the commission has a copy of that amended waiver request, I just wanted to make that note. Don't have a copy. It no, might the, get too complicated. The the two two additional waiver requests are uh, relate to the the requirement to record the plan prior to building permit issuance. Um, I believe correct. The earlier subdivision um, requested that, 
and they're they're simply continuing that. So that would be their request that they be able to pull building permits before um, the plan is recorded. And uh, at this point, staff has no objection to those requests. All right, so I guess we should um, go through these waiver requests. Line by line, it uh, looks like the, f do you want to go through them? Um, I, I, I certainly can. Um, I, I may call our engineer up here though, in, in case you have any questions. Uh, I'm listed here. Um, Scott McMacken with Cowan Associates, the, uh, the engineer for the project. Um, these waivers, uh, just to update the, the, the commission, that um, these were all granted last year for the for the initial project or they're all essentially all the same as 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 last year but um the first one is re regarding the um uh requirement to show um buildings within 100 feet of, of the track um we are we are providing an, an aerial but we do not have a surveyed plan for that uh, given the nature of the project um similarly there's a waiver showing contour sidewalks trails driveways within 400 feet of the track uh, we are asking for a, a waiver from the frontage improvements uh, along Lime Kiln Road. Um, you know, we had some discussion about that last year. Um, you know, we didn't want the, the kids to, we were okay, we put, put the sidewalks up along stadium and, or, and around the radius, but along Lime Kiln, we didn't want to kind of invite that, that foot traffic there. So we're, we're continuing that waiver request. Um, and then the other ones are, are sort of, uh, I guess, uh, technical in nature. There's a requirement for the uh, basin bottom being a 2% longitudinal slope, um, storm pipes being a minimum of 15 inch diameter. We have some roof chains and some smaller pipes associated with the underground stormwater management system. Um, a waiver from the uh, permeability rate uh, and the groundwater recharge requirements. Uh, if you recall, we yeah, the basin um, did not meet um, uh, the ability to have uh, infiltration uh, so we're asking for a waiver from from that basin again it's we're not changing anything from the original uh, application but uh, given it's a new uh, subdivision land development application we we're kind of just repeating this the, the same waiver requests so my only comment on that would be on on 3 saldo 31226 26 a and 31235 b that it would be a deferral and not a waiver Correct, and we're fine with that. Yes, okay. absolutely. I, I would request that we hold on that those two sections until we get back the traffic study. Because yeah, yeah, the turn should, lane may it, it could depend on what PennDOT or yeah, we're fine. That's fine. We we can talk about that one uh, next month. Then yep, no problem. Uh, is there anything else? There's one other point. Oh, actually, I'll let I'll let the waivers go. There's one other point to be brought up. Not a waiver, but. You would bring it up now. <laughs> so, if you remember, there was a condition put on this plan, and I know you know the traffic engineer is not here, but if you remember, there was increased traffic to the intersection of 309 and Lime Kiln. There was a condition written in this plan uh, for the last plan a year ago that said something to the fact that there are 309 betterment projects underway. It will fix this and keep the level of service at an acceptable level. Um, and the condition said something that if betterment doesn't come within five years, the district and the township have the right to observe any additional traffic or problems created and ask the district to do a traffic study and fix it if necessary. That condition would be necessary again. Again, like I said, there's uh, uh, 12,000 square feet, which is 185 um, daily trips, about 30 in the peak in the a.m. and p.m. We would think that it would be appropriate to continue this condition in the next resolution um, moving forward. I know that was heavily discussed at the last, yeah, about a year ago, so I just wanted to bring it to your attention so that if you come back, um, everyone's aware of this. Thank you. 
and the district has no problem with that, whether it's a new agreement or just, uh, you know, a condition referring back to the agreement that was done last year. We have no problem with that. I've, um, so construction isn't completed on the prior project, correct? Correct. That is correct. And has there something that changed in the design or the needs? Uh, yes, the, the school district, um, uh, while the, the project was being designed and approved last year, was going through kind of an overall district study um, about, um, you know, demographics and, you know, kind of a kind of a 10 year plan. Uh, and it was determined that they wanted to move some additional administrative functions over to this to this building. Um, so if you recall, the, uh, the original application had on the first floor was mainly um, uh, the functions of warehousing and, and, and maintenance and those things. And then there was a small uh, second floor uh, that had some administrative functions on, on, the, on the second floor and the upper floor. Uh, this, this proposal just plans to expand that second floor. It's in the same footprint as the original building, but there's going to be a, a additional administrative functions that are going to be included in there. Um, so that, um, so the idea was, well, you know, while this building is being constructed, it just makes sense to add on to it now instead of finishing the building and then having to rip stuff out to put on this new addition. Um, and, uh, you know, it kind of made sense just to, to modify the, the building design and, and uh, essentially with all the contractors there working and everything just to put this bigger second floor on there. Uh, so that's why we're, we're, you know, we're kind of here, uh, even though the, fir the first phase, so to speak, is, is still under construction. And with the, the drawing that's up there now, yeah. uh, where those red hatched parking areas are, wasn't right. that... Was that previously set for that was going to be a back in pull out area for uh, box trucks deliveries? Yeah, there there was loading areas there up uh, along the south side of the building. Those re those red parking, if you recall, were going to be kind of as as the striped as like overflow for uh, footballs. You know, Friday nights for football, this was going to kind of be an overflow area. Um, actually, this entire you know the the entire um, property. Uh, can be used for overflow parking for like football Friday nights, but those those will be just a uh, stripe differently, so they won't look like you know everyday parking spaces, but they can be used for um, for overflow parking. Okay. All right, so Mr. Adams, waivers A, B, D, E, F, and G on page seventy six. Those were granted for the. Previous? Previously, yes. Okay. As as were the two additional waivers they're requesting tonight. So we're going to hold off on C, the waiver from the frontage improvements, anything on that, and then. And add H and I. You want to call them that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so do we have a letter or anything regarding H and I or? We want to hold off. You want to just do, do you have the section numbers? Section numbers, real quick. Um, I believe it was. Yeah. Yeah, a three twelve dash thirteen F three F three yeah. and three twelve forty three. Yes. Yeah. Just. So that those two would be H and I, three twelve thirteen F three, and three twelve forty three. Both of them basically state that um, the plan has to be recorded before building permits can be issued. So we would, they are requesting to waive that uh, to be able to secure building permits prior to plan issuance or plan recording. And staff has no no objections to that. All right. Do we think we could just do a, a mass a vote on A, B, D, E, F, G, H, and I? Yeah, I'll make a motion to grant waivers A, B, D, E, F, G, H, which is 312-13F3 and I, 312-43, 
on page 76 of our packet May 2nd, 2024 final plan review. I'll second. And of course, the community comment or community recommendations as well. If there were. No, this is just for the waiver requests. Just for the waiver. That's uh, right. I'm sorry. No plan. Yep. Sorry. My bad. So, Mr. Dugan seconded. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. So moved. And then it looks like. You need a Mr. motion to the table? It, yes. Does someone want to make a motion? So moved. I'll second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? None opposed. So moved. See you next month. Thank you. See you next month. Thank you. <clears throat>
uh, that's what they have to do. So they did submit an email request for that. That will be in your packet, uh, which you're going to see tomorrow afternoon or evening. Um, so you'll have that to deal with as well. Um, and then speaking of June, our June meeting will have Ridge Farm 1C and Parkland School District New Operations Center Phase 3. Those are the two plans we have for June at this point. That's it. And acting on basically uh, their request for an extension. That's it. All right, thank you. All right, I think that's it. Someone want to make a motion? To <laughs> so moved. Second. All right, so moved. <laughs> thank you.